Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door, and I'm here on beautiful Oak Island, North Carolina. This is one of the North Carolina barrier islands with some really beautiful beaches. Right now, I'm at Maymore Park, a little park on the marsh on the inland waterway side of the island where people can come and crab and access the water. But I'm standing here in the shade of an absolutely beautiful, magnificent live oak. So today's episode is going to be about these live oaks. I'm absolutely enamored with them. They are symbolic of the, the South. You find them here on the coastlines. They are magnificent trees. And I want to share with you everything you need to know about live oaks. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're going to find. Live oaks are native to the Atlantic coast and the southern Gulf coast and seem to thrive in these sandy soils, are very tolerant of salt spray and can take a lot of wind. They may occur kind of dwarfed and almost seem like a shrub and at other times where they have room to grow or if they're protected by strong winds or they find themselves out in the open they will develop these magnificent spreading stately classical structures they tend not to be very tall they usually grow to about 50 feet but the breadth of their branches will often exceed 150 feet wide. These trees are sometimes hundreds of years old and they're very tough, very strong wood, so they're adapted to and can survive the strong winds that are typically found on the coast and yes, even in hurricanes and storms. So these are the leaves of a live oak and for me, uh, calling the Appalachian Mountains home where I have red and white oaks and red and white oaks to me usually have these kinds of shapes and patterns and they're deciduous I mean they fall the leaves fall off in the fall well these leaves appear to be evergreen but they're not true evergreen it's actually January here and you can see that this tree does appear to be an evergreen but these leaves will actually fall off in March at the same time the new leaves will come in. So you won't even realize that the tree had lost its leaves except for the leaf litter it leaves at the end of this uh, week or two long transition. These leaves compared to the oaks at home are relatively small and elliptical and they have this characteristic deeply deeply curved margin you can see how they they curve inwards the underside is much lighter uh, than the top side as you can see here and there's actually great variation in the shapes of the leaves sometimes they may have points and on some trees as they get older they may get to even four and five inches long Live oaks do produce acorns that look much like other oak acorns, and like the acorns I'm familiar with in the Appalachian Mountains. But these tend to be dark brown, sometimes even black. They're super important to wildlife, deer, bear, turkeys, and the endangered scrub jays that often live in live oaks themselves. The indigenous peoples of North America that lived here used live oak as a food source and they actually made a kind of oil which is very kind of similar to olive oil from these acorns to use in cooking. When the acorns were sprouting they'd produce a tuber-like uh, root growth that was also eaten as a root vegetable. In addition to the unmitigated beauty of these trees because the way they grow and spread this wood was very very hard it's much harder and much denser than any of the native oaks and even the esteemed British oaks that were used in shipbuilding in fact these oaks were so so important to shipbuilding here in the US 
This dense wood was very resistant to salt intrusion and exposure to salt and ocean and very, very decay resistant, making it the perfect wood to build ocean going ships with. President John Quincy Adams actually purchased land and established the first federal tree farm to protect this resource because it became a military resource. Because to defend the United States, we needed this wood to build our naval ships. It was called the Naval Live Oaks Reservation, and today it's made up of about 1,300 acres near Gulf Breeze, Florida. And most of these live oak reservations have now been turned over to the public to use for parks and recreation, as well as protecting the species itself. One of the most famous ships built with live oak was the USS Constitution. It's the oldest commissioned ship still on the water today. And it was called Old Ironsides. And it was built in 1797. It did not have iron on it. It did not have iron side. But cannonballs seemed to bounce off the ship. And it survived many naval battles. And it was credited to the strength of the ship that was given to it by live oak. Notice these live oak branches and the twisted manner and how they grow and how many angles they are. They were perfect for producing L joints and curved parts and curved angles holding together the hull of these early wooden sailing ships. It was a perfect wood to build with for its strength and stability and the different shapes they could fashion that are already in place on the living tree. The use of live oaks in naval warfare and in ships was proven in combat to be of superior construction. To me, the beauty of these live oaks and the majesty of them is in the spread of their branches. In fact, in the Old South, these trees would line the roads going up to the old majestic plantation houses. Here you can see how the branches will often dip down to the ground and then start growing upwards again. And they'll spread apart over 150 feet and this very strong wood sustains these branches. I visited nearby Southport, North Carolina because I heard there was an old live oak tree there to see and it's called the Indian Trail Tree. Legend has it that indigenous peoples bent it over to mark a trail or perhaps mark their fishing grounds. It is believed to be many, many years old, as old as 800 years. However, it's more likely that this tree is 200 to 250 years old. It's still a magnificent tree and a local beloved landmark. Took a ferry across to Bald Island as well, and I was just fell in love with with the oaks here on this island and how this island has been preserved as uh, maybe a model for all barrier islands by allowing a lot of the native vegetation to grow as it normally would. The trees here as well were absolutely magnificent. Again, the spreading nature of these trunks are just fabulous. So no episode shot in North Carolina could be made without a visit to Arley Gardens in Wilmington to see this amazing live oak. This is the Arley Oak and it's believed to be over 500 years old. And it's such an impressive tree. It is absolutely gorgeous and draped in Spanish moss brings out this really amazing effect on this giant spreading tree. So the Arley Oak was measured officially in 2007. In 2007, it was 128 feet tall, had a trunk circumference exceeding 21 feet, and had a crown spread of 104 feet across. At the time, it was designated as the largest live oak in North Carolina. Many of these oaks have a reputation for being very, very old. This one was corrugated to approximately the year 1545. So this one has been verified its age. And since most live oaks live to maybe 200 years old in good conditions, this is really, really an exceptional oak. 
So it's been really great to visit this immense oak and many other beautiful oaks in these gardens. But this one is really particularly beautiful and has been the site of many engagements, many weddings, and many personal and family photo shoots. Well, thanks for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door. I hope you enjoyed learning about the live oaks and I hope that you will look for them and can appreciate their beauty and their place in history. Remember, if you like what I do on this channel, please subscribe, give me a like, and leave me a comment. I really love hearing from my viewers. And remember, I cover all things nature, from frogs, toads, snakes, turtles, the myriapoda, insects, trees, wildflowers, and fungi. I cover all the things you might encounter just outside your door. Thanks again for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door.